How's it going guys? So I have week three of the cube. I'm doing this in the morning so my voice may be a little raspy like 50 cent. Um, but yeah, this is kind of an up and down week for me as far as gym performance. I just finished my fifth day, my upper hypertrophy um, yesterday, today's Sunday, December 8th. Both of my last workouts went, went well, the lower hypertrophy and, lo and upper hypertrophy. Um, I'll probably put out some information about what I'm doing on those days, but for right now it's pretty much just like a squat, a hip thrust, some kind of hamstring stuff, uh, that's about it. On the lower day obviously, and then the upper day, I'm really trying to focus on incline bench press, some kind of horizontal row, um, some kind of vertic directly vertical row, so overhead press or a standing dumbbell press. Um, then kind of like some superset stuff of like um, rear delts and lats, like um, this week I did rear delt flies and motor rows, and then it's like some supersets for arms, and that's pretty much it. Um, they're usually taking about 45 minutes to an hour, including the warm up and stuff. But as you've been noticing with these squats, um, talk about the cube stuff now, I kind of have like no snap on this day. Um, the, the program calls for 355 for my max effort stuff, but I knew I definitely could hit um, a lot more than that for doubles. So I went in, I think my first set was a 365, it felt okay, so I went up to 370. And all the sets of 370, and even the last set, which you guys won't see at 355, just felt really, really heavy. Um, again, you can you can attest to this if you're, um, definitely if you're a high bar squatter, but you know, normally if you're just a, a good squatter at all, you tend to really get a lot of momentum out of the bottom. And you see like in all of these sets of squats, I just kind of like got stuck in the hole. I'm not really sure, you know, what the, the cause was. Uh, but overall, it just wasn't an awesome squat day for me. But again, I have to kind of remind myself and everyone that it's more important that I got in there and got some work done. Um, and not so much worry about the weights on the bar all the time. And I, I had a much better squat day later on in the week. And then this was the bench explosive day. This is probably the first day on the program I'd ever say is like relatively easy. The explosive days for definitely for squat and even a little bit for for deadlift are, are pretty tough. That was just my last set of 175 for triple, so didn't want to show eight sets there. Uh, but those went pretty quick. And what I've been doing for a lot of the, the speed stuff is maybe not on these this close grip and the pause, but um, even on the squats and deadlifts, I'll just be doing like 90 second rest periods. So I'm kind of getting some other kind of adaptations there, which is kind of getting a whole bunch of volume and. A dense period of time. But overall, I, I kept these weights just where they were. Um, again, with the explosive stuff, the, the goal is to be explosive. So I don't want to, you know, sit there and, and grind, grind workout all the time. Um, but yeah, this was. I mean, I don't want to say this was easy, but I, I kept the even on the close grip and the pause. I kept it relatively short rest periods. The weights are pretty easy. It was, it was like a 160 bench press or something like that. But um, maybe it's a sign my bench press is coming up and. Definitely the bench press day was a lot better than the, than the squat day. I actually have some assistance work that I filmed for you guys um, just because I've been doing probably dumbbell rows at least once time, one time per week. Um, I know I do it after my bench day. I think I do it after my deadlift day. No, I do pull-ups um, at least once a week. And this has probably become my favorite horizontal row movement. I kind of fall in and out of love with certain movements. Like I go to barbell row and seated cable row. And I don't think there's one that's like, um, superior to them all. I kind of think you should find one that, that you like doing and it can switch from time to time but that's what really I've enjoyed. And I wanted to share this with you guys. I think I should make a separate video about this. I, I might. Um, I don't have a name for this but I just kind of I got this idea and I don't want to say like I've, I've made this exercise but I've never seen anybody else do it. I got this idea from Joe DeFranco because he was having one of his clients just do like a plank with his forearms and the boso ball. And I was doing some sets of those, and for this set, I kind of thought I could crank it up a notch and kind of do like a mountain climber. So I just kind of called these like, you know, mountain climber planks, um, and these were grueling. I think I just did one set of these, just like, um, I think I just did five per leg, 10 total steps. Maybe I did 20 total steps. I'm not, I don't remember. But if you want a cool core exercise, that's, that's pretty damn cool. Again, I'm pretty um, burnt out a lot like the crunches and stuff like that, so I like to get some more functional movement from time to time. And this was the last day, this was deadlift day. So this was another grueling, grueling day. Um, I don't remember the last time I pulled a set of deadlifts, maybe over a set of like five. So I definitely got humbled on this day, which tends to be an overwhelming theme with this program. 
as far as like hypertrophy purposes, these rep days are, are, are insane. I have some incredible, um, you know, pump in the in the areas, even though it's like a deadlift and you're thinking about like, you're probably not using just one muscle group a lot, but my hamstrings were just were roasted. So this was three, I believe 335 for three sets of eight to 12. And the first set I went without a belt, just kind of see how it would feel. And then I hit eight. And then, so I went for, I was trying to go for like, you know, 12 here, but I kind of just hit a wall. And these, these poles are looking, I mean, not very good. I kind of just um, forgot to drop my hips. And looking back on these, I, I watched these afterwards, but looking back on these, they are, and then you see there's a little bit better. I'm, I'm shoving my hips down a little bit. But sometimes I get in a groove with high rep deadlifts, I kind of just, you know, start to pull, pull, pull. Um, and it starts to become just kind of a hinge with my back and not using my legs much. But these these felt they felt fine as as much as these could feel fine. Um, I was definitely feeling them my in my hamstrings and it was definitely difficult to keep form while I was while I was so damn fatigued. Um, so those are two sets there. I didn't get any block pulls, but I actually didn't even hit my my reps. I think it was 355 for six to eight, and I only did like I think six and four. Uh, those block pulls are just killing me. But the cool thing is, I wanted to end this note this video on a good note. Um, I found out if I change my head position, from maybe a slight word down angle to actually make sure I can see myself in the mirror every pull, even on these deficits, and this is only 275 for I believe 10 or 11, my, my back is much straighter and I feel like I can, I can use my legs a lot more um, than per before when, I, when my, my head's more neutral and I tend to have my shoulders pretty far downward. So I'm gonna try pulling this way. Next week will be max effort week for me. Um, with my head in this position and kind of see how it feels. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, give it a like and subscribe if you're new here. And I'll talk to you guys next week.